Yeah. See the red light there? That means every word you say is being recorded and almost certainly will be used <laughs> in evidence <laughs> against you. Good. <laughs> I love it. It is the scary thing about di everything digital. That's it. You do. You know. You show your bum to a camera when you're five, and that's it. You know, you're up for a job, and somebody goes, "Well, yeah, I understand. You're a bit of an exhibitionist." <laughs> so the theme of this little chat, because I like a theme, because I did a law degree and I like mm. court, is what the hell is it with lawyers and comedy? Because there's even historically, there's a lot of you about. Um, certainly in, in England, in mm. Britain, we've had a lot. Um, a friend of mine, uh, Mike Blaha, has been bringing comedy to the fringe and is actually doing a show himself. Mm. So what, is it because your, your day jobs are so horrific or dull or both that you want to get out and hear the laughter of human beings or starting at the end? Well, I, I practice in the magistrates court, so mm -hmm. all criminal cases start in the magistrates, yep. but only 4% go to the Crown Court. And I, I just think the magistrates court is a, a repository of human suffering and tragedy that is, is untapped. Because drama s centres on Crown Court and the silky gowns and wigs, but it's, it's very dark, it's the underbelly of Britain, and it's an untapped reservoir of joy and tragedy. It, it, I mean, the yeah. doctors say that as well. Yeah. It's, if they gave up the day job, they'd have nothing to write comedy about. Mm -hmm. but, uh, it's client confidentiality in any way a problem? Well, um, no. <laughs> no, <laughs> no I, I, have, I have two characters that are an amalgamation of lots of, lots of cases, and I've, I've took them all into two hypothetical characters called Bryn and Mary. And um, are, yeah. they, are they lawyers or are they the accused? No, no, they're, they're my clients, yeah. So I, I, uh, I take the audience through a, a journey of both of them and it, and it helps me bring in strands of the criminal justice system. But, you know, clients, I'm not punching down on clients. We love our clients and we want to help them. Yeah. Um, but they do get up to some very ridiculous escapades and there's this I mean, I, beautiful I, I, comedy there. I right? would imagine, I mean... Yeah. The, it was criminal law that was my bag, yeah. as it were. Right. And it has to be, I was going to say the most fun, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, the, 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 it gives the, the, the greatest wealth of character and everything because you too, you deal with immigration and it's such an angry subject yes. just now. Yeah. And you know, can we please do something about Pretty Patel? I'm not averse to violence because I'm <laughs> going to get in touch with a very good lawyer. I'm here. But I'm so sorry. how, because, in a way, because uh, you say immigration now and people are like, ooh, they're yeah. sending them all to Rwanda. How do you, or, or is that part of your act? Is that your big opener? Hi, I'm an immigration lawyer. I work into the immigration thing into my show. Um, it's obviously really, as you say, a hot topic at this moment in time. And everyone has their own thoughts and feelings about it and stuff like that. But it, it, I think the reason why I like to talk about it in my stand-up is so people have a better understanding, because people have so many misconceptions about immigrants in this country, about what they're entitled to, what they're able to do when they get to this country, how they get into the country. Mm -hmm. And I think I want to be able to like have a broader, like understanding for people for them to like not have these misconceptions anymore but obviously you need to make them laugh yeah and you do and you do try i do my best <laughs> i do very well i'm making yeah. them laugh yeah, I'm doing very well making but, them laugh. but also it's like it's not that hard you know what i mean like ultimately i, I think just sort of summarize the whole thing is like we talk about contradictions yeah. right i mean a lot, a lot of comedy is that simple jerry seinfeld stereotype of what's the deal and the more you look at precedent uh, and all these various cases, you go, what is the deal with this outcome? Yeah. These details, these facts do not, uh, uh, they should not have added up to what happened. Yeah. It's very true in refugee, asylum law and immigration okay. law. And I think it, it lends itself, because I, I went the other way. I was a comedian first. Mm. And then I went to law school, and then you I went... You must have been doing very badly at comedy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was doing well, I was doing well. I was doing all right, I was doing all 
why my parents yeah. weren't thrilled about it. But yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, and then I went, and then I, I uh, weirdly uh, in law school is when I got hired to write for Dan's show, mm -hmm. and so I was like, all right, well, that was cool. And so I, I've actually only volunteered as an attorney. I've never actually, uh, uh, in fact, legally sorry. speaking, sorry, volunteering as a lawyer that means you do it for free. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay, I just want to explain to that when a lawyer does something for free, yeah. that means they don't get paid. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> it's pro bono, but it's almost like doing legal aid law, isn't yeah. it? I, yeah, I deal with quite right. so Is there more of, I mean, you, you just, uh, I know like all my the, the friends I had uh, when I was um, deviling, what you call it, when you're going to be a, an advocate, they call it deviling here, it's like a friendship. Mm. Uh, lawyers, you're always complaining about not, certainly the criminal bar, mm. uh, not getting paid enough. But you never really think of a lawyer as being not paid. No, I mean, that, yeah. that, I mean that's the problem. The government taps into an anti-defendant sentiment. Lawyers are not popular, they're not liked. And, and the very notion that a, a lawyer the, the, the lefty legal aid lawyer, that's, that's, the, that's the mantra yes. of Pretty Patel, isn't it? Lefty lawyers. Um, so the, 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 the government can just neglect lawyers and their pay because it's not a vote winner. Yeah. And, and yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's serious because lawyers are leaving the profession in droves. And, They're going so into comedy. Cause, <laughs> yeah, because I'm I am an immigration lawyer. I work quite a lot in legal aid. That's my main right. staple but when I say lawyer to people people have an assumption exactly. that how I work I've got loads of money that yep. I earn six figures and that yep. I work in a right. corporate law firm and I'm like no that's not how it works um, in this day and age if you if you are able to be in one of those high profession fields great for you but I am poor right. so. no, it's, yeah. it's the same for me when I tell people I'm a lawyer they expect me to be way we, better at my job than I am yeah so, <laughs> so that's a problem yeah <laughs> And is there anything, I mean, slightly fancy, but I was trying to intellectualise this discussion in my head, and I thought maybe the, the reason that a, a relatively, a, a noticeable percentage of comics have a crossover with law is to do with the facility that a lawyer, certainly a, a court lawyer, has to have with language. And you, you get to play with it, you get to have fun with it. And you get to understand how one word sure. can completely change yeah. a sentence in, in terms of, you know, a contract, it can mean mm. it works or it doesn't. In terms of comedy, it can mm. mean it's funny or it's not. Mm. Mm. Discuss. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, words are our tools, aren't they? Mm. And, and, but actually, there's a lot of lawyers are not very good at what they do anyway. At all. Oh. Oh. <laughs> no, no, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a craft, isn't it? Oh, yeah, and, there's six um, of them on the U.S. Supreme Court right now. They're terrible at their jobs. <laughs> yeah, and, no, but it's, it's a craft, and I hear, that, I hear lawyers coming out with the same phrases over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think, like comedy and writing and oratory work, it, it's, it's a beautiful thing, and, and it can move people to do... I mean, that's the beauty of being an advocate your words can turn the pendulum mm. from here to then. It's an it's absolute joy. You know, when you stand up after the prosecution have said their bit and you, you can almost feel the, the weight of the pendulum against you and right. then you feel it move metaphorically. Yeah. In your it's, a, it's an absolute wonderful gift yeah. to be an, an, an advocate for somebody who would never have been able to do that themselves. And, and it works both ways, right? Because actually, in, at least in America, especially when you're appealing cases or when you're going up to the higher levels, you're often trying to find a way to use a judge's words against them, uh -huh. right? They have made a previous argument. Therefore, if you don't rule in favor of my client, you are contradicting what you just wrote. Uh -huh. And especially amongst conservative justices, but also amongst liberals, they, that's what they hate more than anything because Law, like all other jobs, is very human. They want to look at themselves in the mirror and go, I did the best I could, which means they don't want to contradict themselves, which means if you can make that argument, you can often find a winner without you really introducing your own words as much as just using theirs against them. Yeah. Well, for me personally, I didn't ever want to be a barrister. It's not something I ever wanted to do because I'm not personally good with words and public speaking, which is quite funny now. Okay, okay, so now you're a stand-up comic. Yeah, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, there's quite a lot of that involved. Yeah, but... I ended up 
in immigration doing advocacy, and that means I represent people yep. in tribunals because I have a qualification that allows me to do that. And it kind of forced me to be able to present cases in front of immigration judges to be able to argue why the Home Office is wrong in their decision and to be able to use words and to use different phrases and to argue it in terms of case lock and precedent why these cases should be allowed was actually quite great for me in terms of confidence and public speaking, which has obviously worked into my comedy. Uh, can I ask you a question about this? Yeah, sure. This is something I'm, so in America, uh, uh, asylum law, at the very least, comes under the purview of the executive. Mm. So it's separate from uh, 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 the judicial branch. Is that similar in, in the UK? When you're, when you're talking to these tribunals, are they very different bodies than, say, the regular judicial system here in the UK? Or do they fall under the same purview? Like they have to follow like a certain, like, like precedent in terms of like how they assess a case. Mm -hmm. But I always find when you take a t case to appeal to a tribunal judge, they are more understanding, especially when it comes to human rights, right. because they have to um, like evolve the case in terms of like evaluating why this person needs to remain in this country. It's not just about whether they're entitled to the leave to remain and based on mm -hmm. the immigration law or the case or the case law, but it's whether they actually have human rights. And I find judges are better at assessing that in cases, in person, yeah. because they're not just looking at it on pieces of paper. Is there ever, just because I, I worked with a guy who, uh, it was an advocate, and he did use to very occasionally use humour. And he, you know, if he was, uh, um, exa um, exasperated by something that the prosecution had said, he'd pick off his wig and fling it down and he'd sit on the edge of the jury box. And that worked brilliantly in Glasgow. Glasgow juries loved him. They never convicted. Hated it in Edinburgh. It was a nightmare. It, do you think there's ever any argument for utilising any form, whether it's um, you know, sarcasm, whatever, in a legal, I'm not saying you do a couple of gags to get the judge on your side, <laughs> but you know, morning, Your Honour. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did I tell Whoa, you the one? A funny about thing it. happened to me on the way to the court. Yeah. But is or have you ever? All the time. Yeah. I mean, the, the, my biggest beef is the Crown Prosecution Service, who are underfunded and under resourced. So you have so many hearings that are about the, the, the Crown just don't respond to your emails. You can't get a crown prosecutor on the telephone. Right. And, and uh, I can't resist using sarcasm. Uh, it's my, my uh, difficulty. And so sometimes in open court, I've said, you know, it, it would be easier. I said this the other day. It would be easier to obtain the codes to a North Korean nuclear warhead <laughs> than get the crown to provide this evidence. And right. the magistrates love it because actually court's boring as hell isn't it it's mm. trials are boring court can be very dull and and everybody just needs a little pep yeah and, 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 and you know maybe they're they're accustomed to my acerbic wit but but it yeah. is also i mean they are your audience and you have to read them to see how far well yeah but all, all the, they're presented with lawyers whinging and griping because it, it's it's right. a shit show basically yeah. every day and so just to be able to elevate it into a new level of sarcasm performance yeah that's yeah. right and because actually, it is all performance it's yeah. like relief even for the magistrates that's how bad it is yeah, yeah. and you are just like putting on a show, if you want to put it that way, for everyone in the room or for a judge. Yeah. Because obviously in immigration it's kind of different, like the tribunal hearings don't last as long as criminal cases right. in terms of like the length of the appeals and stuff like that. So mm. it is more like, well we're in this moment for like two hours, yeah. well let's just have the best show that we can yes. put on at this moment. And the, the better sh show is it what you put on, the more persuasive you mm. are. I, in a lot of ways, it just comes down to this, right? They are overworked, like you, you like you were saying, mm -hmm. and they're stressed. So if you can make a joke that is talking, that doesn't make them feel like you're wasting their time, but instead makes a joke about how our time is being wasted collectively, I feel like that tends yeah. to be the angle they prefer. Uh, and we're all in this together. Yeah. Because yeah. Mm -hmm. I've had cases where the Home Office representative haven't read the case. They've got it like an hour before yeah. the case, mm -hmm. and they've had to like 
skim through paperwork and I'm the most prepared person in the room right. apart from a judge and I'm like, well, we are going to have some fun with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, or you, you know, you, you're trying to present your client as not a flight risk, he's yeah. worthy of bail, but in the dock he looks like, his hair looks like a, a, a burst sofa. <laughs> so you, you, you might say, you know, he's my client, he may not be wearing Harmony hairspray this morning, but your, your worships, right. but, and then move on to the positive points. Yeah. You, you're acknowledging the elephant in the room. Yeah, the yes. Mm. So, um, who, what if I just, I, there's a woman in the corner. Mm. Either she's doing a royal wave. <laughs> My peripheral vision. But yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, as it's at this time where I make a judgment as to whether or not uh, you, uh, you sound appealing enough to. Appealing, there we go. This is, oh, give this up. is gold, it's gold. Yeah. Um, for me to allow you space on this little 20 minute podcasty thingy. Uh, to promote your show. Uh, the judgment is this, that you have been impressed by your arguments. <laughs> uh, so where and when you are? Well, first of all, I don't hear that very often, so I appreciate getting to hear it. Uh, I'm oh, you, can, you can leave the money in a brown envelope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so many coins. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's a free fringe. Uh, uh, I'm doing my show at 4.15 every day mm -hmm. at Cabaret Voltaire. I love Cabaret Voltaire. Uh, the show was called Illegally Funny by Sid Singh. I see what you did there. Uh, oh, uh, it's illegal for several reasons. Uh, oh. And if you come to the show, I might have an interesting way of getting my audience to help me uh, win the next time my organization goes to the Supreme Court. <gasps> oh. Crikey, I'm signing up. Uh, where, when, how, what? I'm at the, uh, the Pleasance Below at 8.25. The show's called Life of the Party, because um, I'm always the life of the party. And it's all about just enjoying yourself and just celebrating life, um, as well as having interactions with people at this house party, which brings up issues like immigration. Mm -hmm. So um, it's at 8, 8.25 at Pleasance Below. Come along and see the show. And it's a party with you. It's a party with me, and it's all about just having fun and celebrating life. So. Looking forward to just having a party every day in Edinburgh. Cool. And was this your first yeah. show? It's my debut show. Oh. Debut hour. Oh. Yeah. And I saw a preview. It was very good. Oh, thank you, babe. Yeah, yeah thank you. Excellent. Wow. What, why, where, when, how? Um, it's called Shit Lawyer. <laughs> I'm loving it already. Because I'm a shit lawyer. <laughs> I can't believe uh, that. Well, it's ironic. Uh, maybe. Sorry. Um, <laughs> it's at 10 to 6 at uh, the Subatomic in the Nucleus here. Here? Oh. Yeah. And uh, it's, an hour, it's a polemic on the criminal justice system uh, and the demise of the best criminal justice system in the world. Um, but it's sugar-coated in lots of uh, comedy and laughs and jokes. Never a, never a lull. But there's some hard facts in there. Oh, I want to yeah. see that. I think you should. I want to see this. I might bring my devil master. What's to come. that? Uh, he, what you do, when you do an apprenticeship to become an advocate, yeah. it, we right. called it deviling here. Okay. And my, my devil master was um, Herbert Kerrigan, QC. Yeah. Uh, so, this sounds wonderful. That'd be good. It's absolutely fantastic. I'm so excited to have got some lawyers on. <laughs> I feel at home. I feel yeah. you're my people. Yeah. Thank, thanks for having us. Yeah, appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Yeah. I can't believe I just did that. How sad am I? <laughs> You've been hanging out with an American. It happens. Yeah. That would God, I'd be like Timmy Mallet. You, oh. you were almost sincere. <laughs> I mean, you know. No, no. <laughs> oh, God, I need a coffee.